So, okay, guys, let's continue from where we stopped with our uh, electrolytics, and uh, we are going to be looking at uh, the electrolysis in the industry so that we have uh, a total knowledge of all what is needed on this topic. So, however, we are joining us for the first time. This is Mosdi Academy. This is for the SSCE students. So, and uh, please keep it in mind, this is just an elementary explanation of what you call GCE or what basically it is called West Africa Examination Council. We are looking into electrolysis, which is uh, a form of electrolytic cell. We've talked about the factors affecting the discharge of ions and uh, how you can actually identify what and what is going to be liberated at the cathode and anode during the electrolysis. So now we just want to talk about some uh, basic examples on, uh, on the application of electrolysis in, in the industry. Most likely importance or use this of electrolysis the way it is being taught in junior classes. So be that as it may, the basics that we have learned, and if this is your first time, uh, they are used for extractions, for extractions of different metals. They are used for electroplating of different metals as well. They can also be used for purification purification that is the aspect of electro refinery electro refinery process so electro refinery so these are the basics or the base or let me say the most important ways in which we apply a knowledge of electrolysis in the industry a very good example is the picture you can see here as you can see you can see after it was electroplated, it formed this. Look at the way it was before, it were before. And after the whole process, it changes to that. So we can always keep this at the back of our mind. And uh, in addition to this, we can move to the next page and see what we have. Fine. Now, here also, you can see we are talking about uh, the process of which we talk about electroplating. The key point you can just add to what you've learned before is that uh, when you want to electroplate, during electroplating, electroplating or electroplating, the material that is to be electroplated is going to be at the cathode. These are common stuff you see in the objectives. So if I want to electroplate a spoon now, so that means spoon, is going to place is going to be placed at the cathode and a very good example is what you can see here we've talked about the compartment before cathode is the negative uh, pole and the anode is the positive uh, pole then cations will migrate to the cathode and uh, anions move to the anode so be that as it may so what we're talking about here is this you can see this this copper wire and this is the coin that is to be electroplated you can see the position it is placed at the cathode which is the negative electrode the copper wire is positively charged you can see then you start the electrolyte is the liquid substance in it here and at the end of the day look at the final result so this is the final result so keep in mind what you want to electroplate is going to be at the cathode and at the end of the day it will beautify it makes it more neater or it makes what it purify it more so electrolysis can also be used as a form of what electroplating for example plating of coin plating of spoon to mention but few so if you are an ordinary level student you want to be asked more than this level so as a result of that, we can now move to the next page. And about the next page, another example which I talked about in which you can use 
electrolysis for is our electron refining of copper electro refinery so electron refining means the change in structures and the look and shape so electroplating of copper electro refining of copper more of the same place look at the structure of this before look at it when it was refined so now there is a change in the concept you have learned when you are performing the electro refinery or electro refining the material to be what refined is placed at the anode. So I always tell you when you listen to my lecture on chemistry, keep the key fact. So the key fact is what you just need to keep at the back of your mind. So how is that done? We've talked about more and more about uh, impure copper was what we want to electro refine. It's going to be placed at the anode. You can see this is the reaction. At the beginning, we know oxidation takes place at the anode for an electrolytic cell, which is electrolysis. Now, oxidation will take place, you know that, and that is loss of electron from what we can see. So, loss of electron. So, at the anode, oxidation and reduction takes place at the cathode, which is where we are producing pure copper. So, it's a very good example of electron refinery, copper which is dipped in what acidified KMNO4, another key fact. You can keep that at the mark. So it's just like a separation between it. You can look at the pure, look at the anode mod. This is the pure copper that is liberated. This is the impure copper that is to be electro refined. And these are the methodology. Never make that mistake when you are purifying or electroplating we call it cathodic purification. So material is going to be at the cathode. But when you are doing electro refinery, it is just the mere opposite of that. Now we can move to the next slide and focus on basically the other aspect, which is the calculation aspect of uh, the electrolysis. And that also is going to come out in your exams, especially the theoretical aspect. So you need to focus on the formula and some definitions according to Michael Faraday. Maybe we move down there. And the last one, purification, just like what we've talked about, the same process, purification of different metals like copper. Copper can, what impure copper can be purified to make copper. So I won't waste time on this side because we are under a time frame. So let's move to the next one and talk about the quantitative aspect of the Faraday. This is Michael Faraday picture for those who don't know. So we, he actually was given the tag or the accolade of uh, the father of uh, electricity because uh, of its work or its notable work on the, how electricity was, 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 was known or was established. So Michael Faraday from 18 or 1791, to 1867. So in 1834, he was able to give us uh, a, the first law of electrolysis, which students need to keep in mind because it's very popular. By examiners, examiner love asking you to state the law and cut it. According to Faraday's first law, the mathematical interpretation is what I will just talk about. The language form is also very important that he said he observed during his experiment. Michael observed that the amount, the mass deposited or discharged during in electrolysis, mass I write as F, is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity that is passed through it. So that was his observation as at that time. So, but uh, mathematical aspect variation, you can't just say, okay, when the mass increases, the quantity of heat tends to increase. You can plot that on the graph and basically it's going to be a direct variation. So solving this mathematically, we introduce a constant. So we're doing so we have mass is equals to. Now the constant of proportionality we introduce here is called Z, which it's the Z alphabet, ZQ. Now this Z has an interpretation and the Z is called the electrochemical electrochemical 
equivalence. It's very important to keep it in mind. So if you are asked to state the force law of electrolysis in language form, so it is easy to say the mass deposited during electrolysis is proportional to the quantity of electric, the quantity of electricity that is passed through it. So by and large, it is very simple. But what I want to focus on, like I said earlier, is uh, the interpretation numerically, which is most important in the theoretical aspect of your GC and the Y aspect. So we can look into it in this way. First and foremost, we can also rewrite or re generalize this formula in a convenient way, depend on the nature of the question or the calculation. We can say, let's take for example, from your knowledge of physics, you might have studied that quantity of electricity is uh, the current multiplied by the time. So somebody can write in its own materials, mass deposited is equal to the Z, and Q now you substitute I and T. Most importantly, most students know this, Z. Z, I, T is Z. So where Z means the electrochemical equivalent. So depend on the nature of the question, like I said, every parameter has its usual meaning and its usual unit. Mass is in gram. As we are dealing with chemistry, Z is in gram per coulombs, I the current is in ampere, and T the time must always be in seconds. So even if you are solving and the values of the parameters are not in their usual way, students are meant to convert to the way and manner it should be. Only the mass is allowed to be in gram as we are using the CGS system. So let's start be in your mind. So I think it's time to move to the next slide to see if we were able to get what we're talking about. So the language form, I've just talked about it. Mass deposited or liberated is the representation quantity of electricity that is passed. So that is that. Now, the interpretation mathematically is what you can see on the screen now. It's just what we've talked about. M is proportional to Q. Then Q is IT, so M is also proportional to I and T, and all parameters as their usual meaning. So the next slide, I think we are there. Then looking at the other aspect which I've talked about, quantity of electricity is measured in coulombs, current is measured in ampere, and T time is measured in seconds. Every parameter stands with those units which you have to keep at the back of your mind. So in continuation to that, we can also keep in mind that Faraday did not only stop with the first law. Maybe my slide did not produce that, maybe because I was rushing. But we should also keep in mind that uh, Faraday also proposed or was able to actually bring out the second law from the first law. I think I can help you write that in language form and it will help you. Because the issue of the Faraday and the uh, numbers of mole and stuff like that. Now, from the current, from your knowledge of uh, stoichiometry, stoichiometry, we can also bring it to the second law of Faraday. What Faraday was telling us is that if the same quantity of electricity, you can write, the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes. That is, you have uh, different electrolytes that are connected. Permit my diagrams. Diagram not done to scale. So with a such bridge, we've talked about that. So you have different electrolytes like this, and uh, the same quantity of electricity. They were connected to the same battery. As you can see, simple illustration. So let's say these electrolytes, this is a, a kind of a AgNO3 solution, at the silver nitrate, and this is a kind of copper sulfate solution. That is copper two tetraoxo sulfate six. So we can say from here and conclude from the convention flow of current, and uh, you can see this is a battery, current will flow, and because of that, you know, they will split up, and you know, this is connected together by a short bridge. I'm not drawing to scale. I just want to get the interpretation. He said if the same quantity of heat is passing through them, the mass deposited by this is inverse proportional to the electrochemical equivalent or to the numbers of moles. So the interpretation to that for you to get is that what he's saying is that simple way, one mole of a substance 
from your stoichiometry class is equal to what? The molar mass. But in electrolysis class now, the one mole of a substance which we call is equivalent to what we call one Faraday. Remember, one mole of a substance is the same thing as one Faraday. So the Faraday constant, which was said to be the inverse proportional to mass, is now given us because you need to know this formula wise. Direct shortcut formula from what we just talked in language is that uh, the mass deposited is inversely proportional to the Faraday constant, which I will write as C for now. That is what I have just stated in my language form. Then if I relate that coupled with the first, first formula, remember, first formula was basically that mass is proportional to the quantity of electricity. Just be calm about all these things. They are not difficult. Now, and if I combine this by the method of my mathematics, I can say M is now equals to, I'm bringing relative molecular mass times the Q, then inverse relation as over C times R, F. We are F here. I'm taking F as the Faraday. You can keep this formula in mind for the second relationship. So this formula is a key formula for you to solve most of the question on the second part so mass relative molecular mass of a substance and uh, so on and so forth so if the substance is having two moles being discharged it should be equals to two faraday and it was able to give us the value of the faraday constant he called one faraday was equivalent to 96 500 coulombs of electricity you can see so one Faraday equals to 96,500 so that is why we have to multiply by the equivalent conversion so you can convert one mole to quantity of charge that is what we are saying here so intuitively we can say this particular formula of mass proportional to the quantity of heat and inverse proportional to the what to the numbers of what numbers of Faraday can constant can be joined together to give us this relationship, which I call a key formula, which is important to solve a lot of numericals on that Faraday. So, be that as it may, you can also keep in mind for some other technical question that quantity of electricity equals to N multiplied by E. So, I can call N here the numbers of mole. For example, let's take for an instance, if the number of mole of the substance is 2, let's say 2 times what? 96,000. 500. If you recall as well, this is a formula we use under our electric field and magnetic field in physics. So Q equals to N E. We also help you as number of moles is just Q over the number of Faraday or the amount of electron that is being discharged. I haven't known that 96500 is always, or you can just say N F so that it will make more sense here. Q equals to N F. We are F is the number of Faraday. So key formula and also the second key formula. So with these two key formula, I think for basic level and uh, for some of the advanced level questions as well, we should be able what we should be safe to answer any question for now. So let's look at some example I have actually gathered in these uh, my materials and see if by now you can go forward using this formula and not using the formula of relationship that I used here. So let's see if you can do that. And uh, the first one here, wow, fine. Now, those things I've explained, keep in mind, gram, mass is always grams, and always keep it in mind that uh, relationship I've given to you are actually derived from your stoichiometry coefficient. So if it is in terms of equation, remember to balance equation. Remember to balance equation. You should know that you can't do equation without balancing according to law of conservation of mass. So the next one is uh, the first exercise exercise we have here. So we are going to do this exercise together, and uh, we are going to see if we are on the right path. Understanding now. Yeah, we have um, an aqueous solution of copper two. Tetraoxosulfate 6, CUSO4, is electrolyzed using a current of uh, 0 0.150 amps 
in for five hours. Calculate the mass of copper deposited at the cathode. Now, without any further delay, the molar mass was given to be 63.5. So directly, we can use the important formula I gave as uh, the mass we cost to the relative molecular mass, which is 63.5, multiplied by quantity of electricity, which is Q, which is uh, IT. Remember? Very good. Now, current here is uh, 0 0.150 times uh you have to convert five hours to seconds so that is uh 3600 times five i hope you understand that 60 seconds make one minute and 60 minutes make one hour so by and large we can say 3600 hours or seconds equals to one hour 3600 which i love to call 3600 multiplied by five so you can do that in your brain, and if you're not used to doing that, you can use your calculator. It's always allowed for your level question. So that should be 18,000. You are always there to actually let me know. So we multiply that by 0 0.150. I don't think we can do that one with our calculator, but I can try to do that. 18,000 multiplied by 150 is what I'll do, then I'll shift the zero. So those are another logic, but use your calculator. It's always good to use calculator. Please note that. So if we multiply where there, we are going to get something like uh, 270. Yeah, so I'll multiply this by 270. Then I divide this by the charge. Now let's talk about the charge. We've learned that in our previous class. Like if we ionize this, this guy here is going to be Cu2+. plus. So the charge on copper, number of charge, you know, Q equals to Nf. N is the number of charge. Copper is 2. Then Faraday constant F is 96,500. So the next is just to do the calculator job. You can punch, and if you don't want to punch, you can cut out to your own convenience. So by and large, this is more like saying 63.5. Multiply, you can use your calculator. Multiply by 27. Then you are dividing your answer by and six times it should be 193 or 91930 because i'm used to solving a lot of electrolysis questions well, i may not be right but i think i'm having something like 0 0.89 approximately gram so that should be it and if it is not it it will be an error of calculator so that is that just keep in mind the key formula mass is uh, rmm times uh, the quantity of electricity you are dividing that with a charge multiplied by 96,500, which is a constant. So that is that. So I'm going to give you one to attempt. And uh, you can see 0 0.8897, same answer, maybe different procedure. But what you just need is to focus more on the conversion. It's very important. So uh, you are going to try this. Yes, I'm going to try this exercise seven the same way and uh you are going to tell me the answer you leave your answer in the comment section i'll be waiting to see that and uh i think i can stop or maybe i should add one more to make it two yes yes i think i should make it two and this will be the second exercise i think this is more like a lengthy question from Wahek. so you are to talk about this as you can see, it's kind of long, but there's nothing in it, to be honest. It's basically on what you have learned. Q is equals to IT, M equals to ZQ, U equals to NF, and M is equals to RMM times Q over C times F. I'll see you soon. And my future videos do have a wonderful time. And don't forget, if you find anything interesting on this, you can consider subscribing to the channel. Bye for now. Thank you.